Boxing is about money. To fight, you've got to sell all your tickets to fight. A lot of the way that I've acted on Sly and on social media, it's not actually me, but it's a character and that character sells. People that are from where I'm from haven't got the money to buy 10 tickets to fight, 20 tickets to fight. So I need to be hated. I need to make people come out to see me lose. Boxing is actually prize fighting and I'm a prize fighter. So I've got to sell myself. So I've had to act a certain way to sell myself. And as the years gone by, I've started to like the character that I played just to sell tickets at the start. It's kind of become the person that I am. Mm. and um, I've got no regrets. I really enjoy interviewing athletes and especially boxers. This is why I have invited Ahara Davis for a part two. We speak all things Eddie Hearn and some of the controversial things that he said about him. My old friend is now my enemy and Eddie Hearn is my enemy. Some of his previous fights and some of his goals that he's got planned for the future. Thank you very much Ahara Davis for your time and please enjoy this episode. All right, guys, welcome back to my podcast. Um, part two. Part two. Part two. It's been a long time coming. And mm. uh, yeah, we. I think it's a really good moment because obviously you just fought on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on the win. Mm-hmm. And um, no doubt in the next few, few, few well, hopefully a few months or mm. ne- certainly next year or so, Ahara Davis will become world champion. 100%. I've got no doubt about that. <laughs> It's weird because uh, April 2019 is when we mm. first, when I first interviewed you mm. at the um, Essex Fight Academy, mm-hmm. and that just felt like yesterday. And it's just gone like that. I mean, how quickly is life going? I can't believe it was actually three years ago. The time's just gone, and it just shows me I've got to be on a ball, making some moves, progress every day because time is just one thing that ain't waiting for nobody. And um, you know, I've made a bit of progress since then. I think you have as well. So they're both older and we're, and, and we're still here. Um, we still got life. So I'm thankful to God. Yeah, definitely. So you're 30 years of age. Obviously, mm. you just fought over the weekend. So tell us about tell us about preparation for the fight. Tell me how the fight went and how you're feeling right now. My prep for this fight, it was hard. You know, like my camps are all hard. But for this camp, I had extra focus for this fight because I knew I know what this fight meant to me. And I knew that if I win that fight, I know what's next. So I made sure I put all my focus into that fight. Whereas in my boxing career in the past, I've been up and down and this fight, I'm not so focused and this gets in the way. But on my last fight, I had 100% focus in camp. And that's that comes with age, that comes with experience. I've been in pro quite a long time now. And over time, I've seen the mistakes that I've made in the past and I've paid for them. So I made sure this camp, no distractions. And um, I got the win, I felt really good in there the best shape that I've ever been in and um, I just got to be in that shape every fight and I'm sure I'll be unbeatable because last time I interviewed you mm. I think you had just come away within that within that year from Tony Sims I yeah. think mm-hmm. and then you was with a new new team yeah. and now you've you've mm-hmm. moved on since then and off air off off this podcast you said to me you felt the best you've ever felt mm. and it's probably the best team that you've ever had mm. um, why do you feel that? Why do you say that? Because obviously Tony Simmons is a very good trainer. He's got obviously got the likes of mm. Conor Ben, mm-hmm. Ted Cheeseman, who's been another mm. podcast guest of mine mm. and some incredible fighters. And you were a very good fighter underneath mm. him. Why now? Why do you think now is Tony so Sims good? Tony Simmons is a really good coach. I've got no doubt he's a really good coach. And under him, I achieved some good things. I won a WBC Silver, won the English. I joined Tony Simmons in my third fight. And things were all good, but... Where I'm at now, I feel like this coach understands me more. Uh, his name is Will Jones. He's not as known as Sims. He hasn't had as many champions as what Sims has had yet. But he understands me. And I feel like boxing is an individual sport. You can't train everyone all the same. And where I'm at now, I feel like it's all tailor-made for me. And, um, you know, the drills that we do in the gym, the work we do in the gym, is all tailor-made to suit me. And I've looked at my fights in the past and I've looked at my fights I've had with him. I look at my last fight and I'm like, maybe it's just age. Maybe I'm just improving naturally. But I think it's down to my coach as well. Yeah. So 26 fights, 24 wins. Mm -hmm. Um, What I didn't uh, sort of touch on last time is even though you've had two losses, I mean, let's be honest, these are Mm -hmm. two very good fighters. Mm -hmm. Josh Taylor, number one. Mm. You know, um, I th- still think today is he un- undefeated. He's mm-hmm. obviously uh, mul- multiple world champion. Yeah. And, and, and Jack Catterall, who just had a fight mm. with uh, an iconic fight against uh, Mick Condon, who mm. is also another former podcast of mine. 
And when you look at these names, I mean, there's no shame in losing to people like this, but do you honestly look at these names now and think, you know what, where I am right now, my, my headspace, I can beat these? In the Carrawa fight, is a fight that I believe I got robbed in. That's a fight I believe I won. So I never look at that fight and class it as a loss. Taylor's the only loss that I've got in that fight I lost. I got beat. Uh, I wish I could turn time back because I knew that, I know that in that camp I wasn't focused as I should have been. But, you know, I live and I learn. And um, the mistakes I've made, I've learned from them. And I know if round two ever came, it'll be a different story. I look forward to seeing that. Me too. So since I interviewed you back in 2019, I've always wanted to interview you again because what you see is what you get with Ahara Davis. You're very, very transparent. You speak your mind. And you remind me of someone like a Conor McGregor, mm. like a Floyd Mayweather, mm. as far as being confident and speaking what you believe in. And mm. since I interviewed you, um, we've had some mad times. Mm. One of them is this coronavirus. And whether people side on the conspiracy side or the other side, I think what was quite apparent is people were afraid to speak their mind because they were afraid of being shot down by the media or by mm -hmm. their friends because, oh, you're an anti-vaxxer or you're a, you're a conspiracy person, blah, 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 blah. From your point of view, not about coronavirus, but by just talk, talking how you think and feel, do you think freedom of speech has been completely wiped off the face of the planet? Oh, I think so, 100%. A lot of athletes haven't got a speed in my feet because they're afraid of, they're afraid to get dropped by the sponsors they've got, which I can understand because it's the sponsors that give the money. That's how they earn. They get paid every month off of their endorsements that they've got. So they think if I go online and I speak my mind and the people don't agree with this, I might cause an uproar and then my sponsors are then going to drop me and I'm not going to be earning money. So a lot of athletes are just afraid just to speak their mind. Whereas with me, I've always been the kind of person that says, you know what, I'm going to speak my mind. I want to be free. If that means I'm going to get dropped by a few sponsors, then so be it. And I would have a lot more endorsements than I've got now if I was a media trained puppet like most of these guys are. But uh, the money is important to me, but what's more important is my freedom and me being able to speak what I truly believe. And that's why if you don't want to endorse me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna speak my mind and I'm gonna speak my truth. And that's how I've always been ever since I was a kid. And that's something that will never change with O'Hara Davis. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think eventually as you become world champion and mm. as you become even bigger profile than you are now, in actual fact, being integral and true to your word mm. comes back around and you, start, you will start attracting the more opportunities. Mm. Again, mm. look at like the likes of Floyd Maver, et cetera. They're, mm. they're kind of testament to that. Mm. But going back to like, almost media trained um anthony joshua right i don't know him i've met him once i think he's a great 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 athlete i think mm. he's great ambassador for boxing i think he's been very healthy for boxing i i, I rate him as a fighter mm. i'm not too sure he's going to win the usic fight number two mm. uh but that's 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 only a time thing and he's been very good at when he's interviewed in the ring or when he's interviewed by sky or whoever he's very good at giving <laughs> pleasing statements but then there was a thing recently where I think university, college kids, they, they were heckling him and he switched on them. And that's normal because yeah. if anyone heckled you, mm -hmm. anyone heckled me, anyone heckled any bloke, mm -hmm. you know, anyone or anything about him, of course you're going to switch on them. That's what mm -hmm. we do. Uh, but he was seen doing it and then he was scrutinised because it was inconsistent mm -hmm. to kind of hit his, his pattern. So I can see there is a bit of a trap if you're too media trained mm -hmm. and then suddenly you do something that's slightly off piste it can mm. can come back to haunt you. It can, it can, hundred um, percent. And I saw that, um, I saw that clip. It went viral, and all I could say is, fair play to AJ. Okay, all I could say is, just fair play. You know, these kids, they look at him online, and he presents himself in a nice way. But he's a fighter, just like any of us. He feels the same thing as what we all feel. But a lot of people, they might see him online and think this guy is a different person to us. Like, no, he's the same. Just, he, he is like, he is and like the same as us. He feels the same thing that we feel. Everything that we feel, he feels the same way. So when these kids are, every day they're going there and they're saying this and they're saying that, trying to get him angry. Eventually, everyone snaps. Everyone snaps. But the downside to that is that then the public, they then look at you and like, okay, so all of this was fake. <laughs> That's what they think. But sometimes, you know, um, 
everyone's got their limits. Everyone's got their limits. And I feel like the public need to understand that even though he might present himself as a certain way online and, you know, he's a fighter, just like us. He mm. feels the same thing that we feel and they need to give him a break. I feel like the public really need to give him a break and he's, he's got to focus on his next fight. Um, he has got to focus on his next fight because it's going to be a really hard fight. So he's got to keep his mind on the ball. The public just needs to give him a break. That's what I truly believe. But being true to your own word and obviously being transparent with, with everything you say then, mm. I mean, God's honest truth, how do you see that second fight going with him? Uh, I think AJ could win. You reckon? This like the Andy Rees fight, the one fight that he lost, yeah. he came back and it was a different story. But when you're talking about Usyk, you're talking about a whole new kettle of fish. He's not Andy Rees. Uh, but AJ's got a good team. He's got Angel Fernandez. Yeah. He's got Robert Garcia, who is a good coach who has actually been around for years and years and years. He's got Sal Canelo Alvarez, one of the best fighters in the world. So he knows what he's doing. And um, I look forward to seeing what AJ can do with this new team he's got. But it's not going to be an easy fight. It's not going to be an easy fight. Is the victory guaranteed? Hell no. But do I think he could win? Hell yeah. He's got the size, adv- he's got the size advantage. He's got the reach advantage. Um... So you just got to see, we've got, I think it all comes down to game plan. But the advantage is with Usyk because he is the champion. He did win the first fight. So the advantage is with him. But um, AJ wouldn't take this fight if he didn't truly believe that he could win. Mm. So he, if he truly believes it, I'm with him. Yeah, He's from where I'm from. I truly believe it as well. Yeah, I think he could win and I'd be rooting for him to win. Yeah, I'm going to be rooting for him to win, clearly, being a British guy. And mm-hmm. uh, I think, like, again, he's done so much for our sport mm-hmm. and so much for the country. Who's it, man? He's just a tough, tough, mm-hmm. slick textbook boxer. And mm-hmm. um, you know what? I feel like he kind of made it slightly, made, made it look slightly easy against him last time. Mm-hmm. But... I think if AJ goes in there and tries to brawl him, mm. as in really try to take the fight to him, I think he's got a better chance of winning that fight. I don't think so. I think when you look at the size of AJ, if you go in there, try to brawl Usyk, probably get tired in the first three rounds and then Usyk would just do the job, finish him off. Um, I don't think that game plan works. I don't think you can't rush in. You can't rush in against Usyk. You just end up, end up, you just end up getting gassed out. Uh, AJ has just got to play the. Um, he's got to be smart. I'm sure him and his team. I'm sure they've got a game plan, but to rush in and to try to get him out of there early is not the game plan. Usyk's been out. He's Usyk's Usyk's Usyk's, Usyk's, Usyk's been a fighter all these years. He's been and he's been up against people that have got that game plan. They've had that same game plan against like him, Zora. and yeah. he knows how to identify that game plan. He knows what to do. He ain't. Like he didn't get into boxing last week. He's been doing this for years upon years upon years. Olympic champion. So that game plan is not going to work against him. It's not going to work against anyone on a top level. So AJ's got to use his mind, be sharp and smart, which I think is what he will do. Well, hopefully he pulls it off. Mm-hmm. So uh, just going back to what we said about like, you know, speaking your mind. <laughs> and um, I think on the previous uh, interview, I remember there was a video that went viral with mm-hmm. you and Floyd Mayweather and mm-hmm. asked you about it. And you, you, you categorically said that this was an opportunity for you to promote yourself and mm-hmm. get known. And it worked. Mm-hmm. It, de- it definitely worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I'm trying to get to, I interviewed a guy who you know, called Anthony Agogo, who mm. was the Olympian, turned professional, professional career wasn't anywhere like, he, it wasn't the kind of p- career that he wanted to achieve because mm. it was riddled with injury, mm. etc. cetera, eye socket, mm. blah, blah, blah. Now he's a pro wrestler. Mm-hmm. And I interviewed him about, you know, the difference between the boxing, pro wrestling, etc. Mm-hmm. And he said, in wrestling, you've got to choose from the get-go whether you're going to have the persona of the good guy Mm. or the bad guy and he said he went for the bad guy because as a pro boxer he was the good guy and I said okay I get that dynamic and he said and it's, it's weird because if you actually hate it a bit more you actually get a bit more traction because mm-hmm. more and more people want to see you lose mm. a bit like the Floyd Mayweather thing again and I'm, I know you haven't ever told me categorically yeah I've gone out there to be hated but the way you're so transparent with what you say was that a bit of a game plan like to be like the bit of a the villain in every, everything that you do Boxing is about money to fight. You've got to sell all your tickets to fight. 
when I first turned pro, I fought in a couple of small shows. I got a hundred pound in my second fight. I know where I'm from. I can't sell any tickets. When I got signed to Matchroom, and I know it is, I know this game is all about ticket sales. If I can't sell any tickets, I'm not gonna fight. So I thought, you know what? My friends and the people that are from where I'm from haven't got the money to buy 10 tickets to fight, 20 tickets to fight, 30 tickets to fight. So I need to be hated. I need to make people come out to see me lose. And I need to gonna come out and buy tickets. A lot of the way that I've acted on Sly and on social media, it's not actually me, but it's a character and that character sells. Uh, boxing the prize fighter is boxing is is actually is actually prize fighting and I'm a prize fighter so I've got to sell myself so I've had to act a certain way to sell myself uh, and that's all it is really that's what it is and after years gone by I kind of like it I like it I like being a bad guy I like coming out to a fight and getting booed I like people coming out to say I want to see Harry Davis get beat and then I win, and then I prove them wrong. I've started to like the character that I played just to sell tickets at the start. It's kind of become the person that I am, mm. and um, I've got no regrets. Yeah, it's like a bit of a, like a stage name, mm-hmm. isn't it? You know, you're, 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 you're there to sell tickets, as you said, and, you know, when people feel mostly driven to see someone either win or lose, mm-hmm. they're going to pay good money, mm-hmm. and they're going to get their friends to pay good money in order exactly. to, 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 to see a result that hasn't hasn't it's rarely happened mm-hmm. so I, I get it however i so like you know looking so if you go in ahara davis type in news loads of articles come up you, mm-hmm. you know you're a big profile online and there's certain things that i didn't ask you before because well my podcast all started about mindset and stuff mm-hmm. but over the years it's evolved mm-hmm. and i like to challenge myself by asking hard questions and obviously i understand playing like the villain type side in, in the boxing matches mm. does sell more tickets it looks like here some of it is bled into your personal life because I didn't even realise in 2017 some holes <laughs> scratched into your car hoe into mm. the Audi and also smashed your, your wing mirrors and that must have because people have bought so much into the billing online they think you're like that in real life which you're not by the way mm. you're, you're, you're a gentleman and you're a really nice guy but they just lash out Mm. on the person they think you are what what's that like um to be honest it don't bother me a lot of people they'll sit at home and they'll be sad and they'll cry but you gotta have thick skin when you get in this game and you decide to go down that path where you say i'm gonna be the hated one i'm gonna be that villain people are gonna think that's how you are in actual real life and they're gonna treat you that way outside of the streets and you gotta be ready for that. You gotta be thick skinned. Like it's like some films that I've seen. I've seen I've seen them I've seen some films and it like a few series where the bad guy is someone that I don't like him in, in the film. I don't like him in the film and then I see him in person and I know who he is. I don't even say hello to him because my cause I'm thinking of him what I've seen him do in a film. And even though I know it's a film I know the film. I still think that's him. So I'll see him in the streets. I walk past him or I'll be angry at him. I'm like, this asshole. Or just something like that. And if that's a film and that's how I felt, I can see how other people see me that way in boxing, which is more real than a film. So so at the end of the day, I understand where they actually, and I understand where they come from. And I don't blame them for it, but I've accepted that I'm going to play a certain role. People are not going to like me for it. It's okay. Life goes on. As long as my friends know me and my family know me and they love me and they love me for me and they know me f- for me and they know that a lot of what they see is not me. It's just an act to sell. Uh, I'm okay. I don't need the world to love me. Yeah. Um, so again, when I when I typed in the news, go, go into the news section, there's like two things that come up here from, from the sun and I was going to read them out to mm. you, not to antagonize you, but... One thing I've learned being in business for myself and being 36 mm-hmm. years of age, almost 37 later on this year, I understand that there is the truth mm-hmm. and then there's something called the narrative. Mm-hmm. And what papers tend to do, what the BBC tend to do, is come up with a narrative, mm-hmm. which is slightly on the truth, mm-hmm. but it's a more elaborate version of it. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you one thing in here, which, not to disgruntle you again, but just to ask did you say this and how does the sun span it in a negative view? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is what I've got written down. Okay. 
2019. Outrageous boxer Hara Davis asked why millions were spent on Madeline McCann uh, search, but the hunt for, trying to pronounce this right, Emiliano Sala ended after a few days. Mm. And basically what the summer's trying to get at is Hara Davis doesn't care about the search for, for Madeline McCann. Of course I do care about the search, but it's a question that I'm asking. Why is millions... It can be spent on one case, but then it can't be spent on a second case. It's about equality, and I feel like if you're gonna, if you can spend millions upon millions on one case, then millions upon millions should also be spent on a second case. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's just fair, and I saw that in the papers, and I'm like, you're trying to make me seem bad. You're trying to make it seem as if I said something wrong. If it is wrong, then it is wrong. But that's what I truly believe. I feel like it's about equality. Spend millions on one case, spend millions on a second case. And um, that's what I truly believe. That's what I said. Yeah. But I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, after this day, I still believe it. I still, I still believe and I still stand by what I said. Yeah. I mean, l- listen, I think it's logical that if you're going to, if you if you look at, if the same objective is to, to find someone, mm-hmm. then surely the same care and attention mm-hmm. and money mm-hmm. should be spent on, on both. So I totally understand that. Mm-hmm. But when the sun spins it in, 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 in a way where, they're trying to scrutinise you mm-hmm. and say that you're uh, you're 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 kind of trying to be disrespectful mm-hmm. to the family. Do do you think do you think they have it in for you, the media? Uh, no, I think the media it's just business at the end of the day, and their job is to make money. Their job is, is to sell as many papers as they can, get as many eyes on their papers if, uh, as they can, even if it makes even if it means making another person look bad. And that's the game I'm in. When I first got into this game, I knew the game. I understand it. Their job is to get views, and if they can me, if they can make me look bad to get views, then that's what they're gonna do. After, 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 I understand it. When I chose to go down a certain path and to play the bad guy and to speak my mind, I'm ready for these things, and I'm an easy target because I speak my truth. I speak my own mind, and that's the kind of people that they go after, not these people that are media trained that don't have any opinion so these papers they live and they survive because of guys like me so I understand it that they're constantly searching for things and they're looking at what I say so they can write a story but it is what it is like people can read it if they want and they can believe what they write it doesn't bother me as long as my friends and my family know me and they love me for me it doesn't matter yeah yeah they must get frustrated with you because no matter what they say about mm-hmm. it, you, you never get emotional about mm-hmm. it you're all about your business. You go out there and fight mm-hmm. and win, mm-hmm. and and you and you just doing doing your thing. Exactly. I don't think it gets on their nerves because they're still getting eyes on their paper. But they would get even more eyes on their paper if I have to go online and if I post it and I say, "Look what the Sun wrote about me." Then they'll be like, "Wow, more like it's more." So now it's even more eyes on the Sun. But I see it. I hear about it. Ignore it. Yeah. Ignore it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, this is last thing I'm going to say about this part, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so this was in 2017, I think, and mm-hmm. um, I know you've probably been asked this a bunch of times. And my first interview, I did, didn't I, I, I ask because it wasn't a part of my agenda, but mm-hmm. just obviously going through it now, I wanted to ask you. So you said this quote in uh, about the Sun, which was the Sun is my favourite mm-hmm. uh, newspaper. I'll wear their logo on my shorts mm. and they will work with Eddie Hearn to promote my fight mm. My fight uh, one day after I knock you out, my first interview will be with The Sun. Mm. Now, I didn't realise there was this connection to like the Hillsborough mm. disaster. So what what was, what's that all mean and how's it all connected? I've never been asked this asked before. Really? Before. I've never been asked this. Okay. You've actually gone deep into it. <laughs> so... This is when I got thrown under the bus because I'm not sure if you heard about what well, you know about the Hillsborough situation. Yeah, I do. And um, when I wrote that certain tweet up, a lot of people thought I'm disrespecting the family of the 96 or 97, the 96 that died um, in the Hillsborough. At this time, I had never, ever heard of the Hillsborough. If you look at that certain tweet, I sent it out to a fighter, Tommy Cole. Tommy Cole's from Hull. The Hillsborough happened up in Liverpool. You got nothing to do with him. So why is it that I mentioned the sun? I mentioned the son because it was a son that exposed him that he's been employing former criminals, former former people that have been to jail to work with the kids in his gym. So you're going to jail, you're going to a certain jail, a certain prison, getting old drug dealers and stuff that have been jailed, and then 
you're going to let them work with the kids in your gym. And the son exposed that. That's the reason why Tommy Kell doesn't like the son. That is the reason why this guy doesn't like the son. So when I saw that, and he's been tweeting, don't read the son, don't buy the son, because the son's been exposing what the things that he's been doing for all these years. Mm. That's what I said, when I knock you out, guess what? I'm going to wear the son in my shorts. And so then the people, somehow they made a connection to that in Hillsborough and said that I'm disrespecting the family of the 96 that died in Hillsborough. And I, at the time, I'd never heard of Hillsborough. Mm. Don't forget, Hillsborough happened a bit before I was born. I was born in 1992. The Hillsborough happened in 1989 or something like that, before I was born. Hillsborough happened up in Liverpool. I'm from London and it happened in a football event. I don't know anything about football. I can't name you 10 footballers right now. I cannot name you them. I don't know anything about football. So how they made the connection to that and the Hillsborough, I do not understand. But it's just because I'm the outspoken one and my words, they got twisted and the people wanted to believe anything that they wanted and because they know that I played a bad guy and they wanted a reason to hate me. Yeah. They like they wanted a reason to hate me and they used that situation to throw me under the bus. And that's what happened. Um, as much as, as much times as I've actually came out and I've spoken my and I've, I've and I've literally let everyone know why I said what I said, and they believe it. They know that it's the truth. They just want a reason to not like me. Yeah. But don't twist my words and make it seem like I'm like I'm being disrespectful to the families of the ninety six that died. That's not who I am as a person. You think I'm gonna see all these people that got killed and these sons that have got no dads or mums, the, the and these guys that have lost their older brother or their younger brother and their sister. You think that I'm gonna look at them and laugh at them and send a tweet as a joke? Come on, I might play the bad guy sometimes, but I'm not that bad. That's just evil. Yeah. That like, that is just evil. And when they said that, um, it was a complete uproar. The whole boxing industry came at me. Everyone came at me. Oh my God, I remember that time. It was, yeah. th- that was probably the hardest time in, in my boxing career. So, because um, do you know what? It, it took me, it actually took me a while because I had to ask if, because again, it, it happened when I, mm. you know, I wasn't super, I, mm. I don't know a lot about the Hillsborough mm. disaster. I know it was a disaster. I know it happened at the, the football stadium. Mm-hmm. I know it happened in Liverpool, but I don't really know much else behind mm-hmm. it. And I still... The reference with the sun and Hillsborough, I still couldn't get my head around it. Mm. I was like, I don't understand. Well, mm. what, why, why is that such a bad thing? And what I what I'm led to believe now is apparently the sun alluded to the fact that it was the fans' fault, not my words, mm. the sun's words. That's what they alluded to, and therefore Liverpool don't like the sun newspaper. Yeah. And they don't sell the sun newspaper. So, and that now you've you've you obviously explained your position. But when they they were trying to make out that you were saying the sum to antagonize them because the sum was trying to say that the yeah. supporters it was their fault but, that was the connection but it's not obvious if you if i go online i, I it took me a while to to mm. to, to work that out because i didn't i yeah. really didn't understand what that meant but mm. yeah no. and that tweet that i got sent it got i sent it to i sent it to someone that is from hull yeah he's not from liverpool yeah. anyway so there was no connection at all whatsoever so it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You know, you said that it was the hardest time in your in your boxing career. Mm. Um, there must have been people like, you know, send you DMs. There must have been people sending you hate mail. You know, was there was it? because that's my, f- I've been misunderstood a few times, but this was like the most time like you really misunderstood me. Like, and not just one person, everyone. Did anyone ever try to like attack you in the street or anything like that? No one can attack me in the no. streets. I'll get them in the streets. Now, a lot of these guys, they can say stuff online, but when you see me in the streets, you've got to show me a bit of respect because, yeah. like, you know, I'm not a media trained puppet like these guys. I'll put my hands on you if you put your hands on me. So a lot of these guys, so they know that. So they stand behind the computer and they type what they type. That's fine. But when you see me in the streets, you got to show me a bit of respect. So on the streets, no one says anything on the streets, but then they come online and they say stuff. Now they don't, now because I've spoken my truth so many times and they know that I was innocent. But back then, I was getting a hell of a lot of messages, hate mail and stuff like that. So that was a really hard time because my manager and my promoter and my coach, they all believed me that I was innocent. They all knew that I was innocent. But they still said, we have to distance ourselves from you online because we got fans up in Liverpool. And Eddie Hearn was like, 
I've got shows up there and I sell tickets up there. I have to make it seem as if I've, as if I'm going to discipline you, that I'm going to take you off this show and put you on that show to make it seem as if I'm going to discipline you. Even though I do know you're innocent, it's about money. So I was like, fuck you then. And I went to Frank Warren. Shit, can I swear? Of course you can. So, yeah, so I was yeah. like, fuck you then to Eddie Hearn. And then I went to Frank Warren and said, and um, my coach, when they said to me, I'm allowed back in the matching gym, I was like, uh-uh. I'm good. I left. My manager, our contract was done the month after. So I just didn't resign. But they all make it seem as if they dropped me. Tony Timms didn't drop me. Charlie Timms didn't. I didn't get dropped by him. Eddie Hearn, he didn't drop me. I left everyone. And I went down my own path. Because if you know that I was innocent, then why would you publicly go online and make it seem as if I'm being disciplined to make it seem like I'm guilty mm. so it's all about money isn't it it's all about money I do understand where they I do understand where they come from obviously these guys don't care about me I'm not their kid I'm not their brother or their family they don't care about me it's just my coach just my boxing promoter fighters we come and go so they thought you know what fighters they come and go every day so it happens isn't it so so um is is that what you mean by let's say being thrown under the bus by Eddie Hearn? Yeah. You know, the moment you said that and they even knew you were innocent and they even said that to you, mm-hmm. but they still chose to do something that mm-hmm. was making it look like they were giving you a telling off. Exactly. It's just so they can get a round of, of applause by the boxing fans and they'll continue to come out to their shows and buy tickets to their shows. That's what it was. But you know, I'm in a better place now and I'm much happier now. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that I will never work with them with those guys again ever. How would you feel about Eddie Hearn now? I don't like him. Because <laughs> I saw on the I- I- IFL TV mm. and uh, I've really enjoyed watching mm. your videos, mm. mate. Cause, uh, Just because when they done what they done, yeah, my boxing career could have been done. My boxing career could have easily been done. Easily. When that kind of stuff, when, when, when that kind of thing happens to a fighter, their boxing career usually ends there. Then and there, they usually don't go anywhere from there. Yeah. Luckily, with a bit of help from God and my team, I managed to get myself. I'm ranked number three in the WBA. I got a final eliminator for the world title next against the Eddie Hearn fighter. So if it goes to purpose and Eddie Hearn wins, if I, if that's a fight that I do have next, I'd be looking to shut Eddie Hearn up and sticking my two middle fingers at him saying fuck you you thought I needed you you thought I needed match room I don't need any of you suckers I can do this shit myself and that's what I'll do next you know what it's um, things happen for a reason in life Mm -hmm. and uh, I think you know certain things which are not been textbook can Mm -hmm. actually fuel you to having great success and Mm -hmm. it seems like there is a point to prove there there is 100% 100% because everyone thought everyone thought I was done I fought Taylor, I just took my first loss. Everyone thought, and then I got thrown under the bus a few months later. Everyone thought, that my, everyone thought I was done. Everyone thought I was done. And I'm not done yet. I'll never be done. I'll keep going for as long as I I choose to keep going for. There's no, there ain't no one that can make me done. I choose when I'm done. No one that can come out there and tell me I'm done or do this or do that. Like You can say what you want. You can tarnish my name as much as you want. I'm done when I'm say I'm done, not when anyone else says I'm done. Yeah. And that's the point that I'm here to prove. Yeah. And they see me that I'm still here, I'm still going, and I know they're shocked. I know that they're surprised. Now, if you have a press if you ever if you ever if that if that fight goes ahead and I have a conference and if Eddie Hearn sat there, I'm gonna give it to him so much, the guy's gonna hate me. He better hope that if you have a conference that he's not there. Because I'm gonna give it to that guy so much. If you saw Eddie Hearn, I would love it if, if Eddie Hearn, if I knew Eddie Hearn and he walked in here today, what would you say to him? i uh, like, you threw me under the bus and you thought I was done and I'm still here, you sucker. How do you feel? I'm still here. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm done when I am say I'm done. Not when you say I'm done. Fuck you and Matt Room and my whole team that threw me under the bus. I don't need those suckers. Um, have they, is Matt Room, Eddie Hearn, anyone like that ever tried to reach out to you since? Uh... Eddie Hearn tried to sign me again. He tried to get me on a free fight deal. And then I chose to go to Frank Warren instead. Eddie Hearn phoned me, offered me a free fight deal. It was an okay deal, but after throwing me under the bus, I went to Frank Warren instead. And now the last time in that I spoke to Eddie Hearn. I haven't seen him or spoken to him since. 
And then Sim said, I'm working back in the matching gym. I chose to go my own way to find my own path. I haven't heard from them since. But it's life. It's, like, it's just it's, it's just boxing. Yeah. Boxers, fighters, we come and we go. And Eddie Hearn's seen many fighters come and go. It's not just me. So Sims has seen many fighters come and go. It's not just me. He's had over probably over 50 fighters. I'm just one of them. Yeah. So fighters are nothing to these guys. We're like nothing. You like, I mean, these guys are like, you know, these pimps that have got these girls, then they say, the pimps say they come and go. They all come and go. That's what us fighters are like. The fighters, they come and go. They come and they go. So I know, I know the game. I understand the game. Um, usually I say, I don't, I don't take it to heart, but this one, I took it to heart. Would you, would you, would you say that if fighters get, I mean, maybe all athletes, but I can see with the boxing, mm. you get exploited. Mm. You know, they get almost get used. We get used, but we get paid quite yeah. good for it. So <laughs> I don't mind being used. Yeah. Use me as much as you want. <laughs> Just pay me well. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, you're 30, right? Mm -hmm. And you're still young, but mm. as far as an athlete's concerned, you, yeah. you know, you're pushing up a mm -hmm. bit, yeah? Mm -hmm. there, there are obviously examples where fighters can go over 40, mm -hmm. sort of, you know, Bernard Hopkins or some of the greats have gone yeah. to a ripe old age. But yeah. at 30, around about mm. this sort of age, it's, this is the point where it's almost like mm. do or die. And mm. I know your mindset is you, you're doing this thing. You're mm. going to become world champion. But honestly, in the next two, three, four, five years, when do you think you're going to hang out the gloves? And what are you actually going to achieve between now and then? What is the roadmap for Ahara Davis? I want to retire. I want to make some more money, to be honest. I'm in it for the money. I want to make as much money as I can, buy as many properties as I can. And when I, and, and once my boxing career is done, I never want to have to work another day in my life. I want to say free boxing. I made a bit of money. I was smart. I invested well, bought a few properties. Now I can retire and sail into the sunset uh, and until I make enough money to set myself up for life, I'm going to keep on going. And how much is enough money? Uh, it's not enough money. It's enough property. How much is enough property? Don't know. Don't know. Depends on what kind of lifestyle I want to live. I can retire now, but I've got to live quite a poor lifestyle. So, don't know. I want to retire on um, eight, nine properties. Yeah. All giving me cash flow every month. Yeah. I can live in that cash flow. Yeah, nice. That would do me good. Nice. Becoming world champion is inevitable mm -hmm. in your own mindset, mm -hmm. but is is do you really keep, like really I don't want to use the word care, that's a wrong word, but does it bother so if you made ten million but you're only one world one world title, would that be all right for you? Or would you want to win three or four world titles and also have the money? What I wanna win as many world titles as I can. But what's most important for me is the money. I want to win a world title. I want to become a world champion, hundred percent. My next fight is a final eliminator for the WBA world title, um, and I'm thankful to have this opportunity. But I also understand that at the end of the day, a belt's not going to feed me for the rest of my life. Mm. The money will. So, uh, for me, the money is so important. It's so important because I know fighters that have won three world titles, four world titles in different weight classes, and today they're bankrupt. They're on eBay trying to sell their belt. How about Ronnie Clark, that he was on eBay trying to, and and he actually sold his belt. I think he sold it for about 10 to 15 grand, I think he sold it for, or five grand. I'm like, you, you worked this hard to win a title and you're gonna sell it on eBay? Come on, trying to exchange his belt for money. I've never seen anyone trying to exchange their money for a belt. Come it's crazy. On. It's crazy. So. It's, it's a sad, it's a sad, brutal truth that a lot of athletes, when they when they do hang it up mm -hmm. or they stop playing football or basketball, yeah. they they go broke. So every every athlete, every fighter's got to learn about this now, now, not tomorrow, now, like yesterday. You have to, otherwise you make stupid mistakes. And I made a few stupid mistakes, but once I decided to wake up and financially educate myself it's the best thing I've ever done who, 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 who's been helping you with the financial education because obviously you, the, you was on this path anyway when I mm. interviewed you mm. last time but, mm. but now you have got 
last time I don't think you had properties. Now you've got properties, and now you're talking about yeah. even more and bigger and better. Mm -hmm. Like who's been who's been so helping? To be honest, you? the greatest educator is not university; it's actually YouTube. I go on YouTube. I learn a lot more on YouTube than I learn in a finance class up in university, and it's free. You've got to sit through a few five second ads, and you get all this information given to you. Uh, I've spoken to you as well. I've spoken to you to see what you're into. I've got a few mates that are into apartments, probably guys that buy houses, guys that buy, sell, and then they renovate them. And I've looked at what everyone does. I just speak to everyone, and then I come up with my own. With with I, I come up I come up with my own conclusion. Uh, what's going to work for me, and what I can afford. Yeah, what I can afford. So I just speak to everyone really. Um, I never went to a school or finance class or, or anything like that, but it's quite simple to understand. You just got to go out there and speak to a few, um, a few other, yeah, a few people that are in that field. Instead of being sat at home, sat on a PS5 all day on FIFA, why not go online and watch a video that takes five minutes mm -hmm. and then go onto FIFA after that? Now put five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, watch a few videos, and then as time goes on, you learn. Yeah. And then once you learn, you do. Yeah. And then it all comes, yeah, then it comes all together. Yeah. It's top, it's, it's simple advice, but so many people don't do it. They get lazy and complacent. Mm -hmm. And uh, hats off to you for, for investing your time and, and now mm -hmm. you're, you're benefiting mm -hmm. from it. Um, so the fight is in front of you right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you've obviously got the Eliminator. There's world mm -hmm. titles in your division. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone out there that you believe right now that is a big problem for you or do you think you smash for everybody? <laughs> Listen, everyone I fight next is going to be a hard fight. They're all going to be 50-50 fights. Uh, do I believe I'll smash everyone on my best day? Yeah. But then again, that's up to me to train and to prepare that I'm at my best. I never like to look at myself as the best. I always like to see myself as the underdog and I'm chasing everyone else. That's how I like to see it. Otherwise, I'm not motivated. If I believe I can beat all these guys so easy, I'm not going to focus properly because I believe I'm going to beat this guy anyway. So I never like to have that mindset. My mindset is always these guys are a level above me and I'm trying to catch them and I'm trying to, and I've got to dethrone them. That's the mindset I've got. Um, and me going into my next fight, that's the same mindset I've got. I'm fighting someone that's a bit better than I am. And I've got to be on my absolute A game to even stand a chance. Yeah. That's the mindset I've got. So if you can name me some 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 fighters that you're looking at right now thinking, he's a tough fight, but I'm going to beat him. He's going to be a tough fight, but this is what I need to do to dethrone him. Just my next fight. Sander Martin, that's who I'm looking to fight next. Okay. He's the only person that I've got my eyes on. Everyone else, they're so far in the background, I can't even see them. Just my next fight, Sander Martin. And if you ask me this, same thing this time last week I wouldn't have said Sander Martin I would have said this guy that I fought on the weekend is gone because I had people asking me about Sander Martin last week and I was like uh uh I need to get through this fight first so I've taken my boxing career one fight at a time because the mistake I've made when I fought Taylor and I took my first loss I was I planned my whole boxing career I planned it all and when I lost I'm back to square one everything come up top and I was like, fuck. All those plans I had are now down the drain and I've now got to get a new plan. So so you can't plan ahead. You can't plan. I can't plan too far ahead. That's the mindset I've got. Yeah. So, okay, this next opponent then. Mm -hmm. um, about him, I don't really know too much about him. So what's his style like? Uh, how, how would you beat him? He's a, He's been an underdog in his past few fights and he's beat everyone. He fought Mikey Garcia which everyone thought he's going to get his ass whooped and he won the fight. Uh, he's fought some really good names. He's from Spain. His name's Sandal Martin. I haven't seen that much of him myself, but and he's, I've got to go home and I've got to do my homework with him. I know that he doesn't hit that hard, but he's nice and slick and quite skillful, quite fast on his feet. So for me to be him, I have to be fast on my feet. I have to be sharp. I have to, have to be alert um, and... I can't focus on my punching power because he's quite slick. He's he he'll be easy for him to get out of the way. I need to be faster than he is, sharper than he is, and slicker than he is. Yeah. Do you know like when you take a loss, yeah, as a mm. as a as a as a boxer, mm. I think it's different if you take a loss as a football uh, mm. team or if you're <clears throat> in another profession. But yeah. <clears throat> boxing mm. is one of those things that 
when you take a loss, you also remember that it's a lot of pain, not just emotionally, but actually physically. Mm. You know, some people get really, really hurt and stuff. And one of the reasons why I'm saying it is that I'm a boxing fan mm. and I trained down Boxing Booth and there's mm. lots of Mick Condon, Harlem mm. Eubank, Josh Kelly, Shannon mm. Courtney. There's some great fighters mm. down there and they're, they're all fantastic and mm. they all got their own skill set. Mm. But Josh Kelly come back on the weekend and he, and he, and he won, mm -hmm. but he was at the ring for 18 months and his loss that he had, he got stopped, mm -hmm. you know, and it was actually quite sad to see because I, I like Josh. Mm -hmm. I think he's a great fighter. I think he's very, very slick. Mm -hmm. And I think that where he has got that flamboyant style, mm -hmm. again, people scrutinize him because they're like, oh, you're, you're being a bit too flash, mm -hmm. but I think he's really good at what mm -hmm. he does. But there was a few people, not my words again, but saying, ah, he's, he's come back from this loss and, you know, he's been out the ring 18 months and mm. he doesn't look like the same fighter. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, when you come back, it's commendable getting back in the ring anyway, but then going on to do some great things. Like, how, do you, how, do you, how do you do that? A loss affects you so much. I look at some of the fighters that I fought and about three of the, about three or four of the guys after they fought against me and they got knocked out, they've never fought again. I look at Logan New in my first fight in the Golden Contract, everyone thought this guy's the next big thing. He beat Ryan Garcia and he beat Devin Haney apparently in the amateurs and he won the Golden Gloves, they said about him and I haven't got a snowball chance in hell to get this win. That's what everyone said about me and I knocked him out. And it's been about three, four years now, and he hasn't fought since. He hasn't fought since. And a loss, especially if you get stopped, it can affect you so much mentally. And and you're never the same after that. It's like after I fought, after I took my first loss, I've never been the same since. I think I'm even better now since. A lot of people, they come back worse. They can never get over it. And it's one of those things where only time will tell. Only time will tell. Have you got the mindset and you try to come back and then you think, nah, this ain't for me. Or you got the mindset, you come back and you do even more damage. It's all about the mindset. It's all about the mindset. And either you got it in you or you don't have it in you. It can't be taught. It's one of those things you can't teach. Well, that was going to be my next question. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if someone took a loss, not not directing this at uh, jo Josh Kelly, because he, he came back and won and I think he's going to do mm -hmm. some really good things. <clears throat> But again, there, there, there is sometimes evidence looking mm. at a fire thinking, bro, oh, they yeah. just don't look the same. Like, what is the advice you give them? <laughs> there is no advice. Have you got it or you don't have it? Have you got it or you don't have it? You got it or you don't. There is no advice you can give. None. I've been in this game way too long. I've seen it happen way too many times. And sometimes you can't give anyone any advice. Either they have it and they're going to do it, or they don't have it in them and they're not going to do it. You mm. just got to wait and see and only time will tell. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your team, your new mm. team, yeah? Mm. Um, you've got a lot of attributes as a fighter. Mm. Tough, gritty, mm. you know, you can hit hard. Um, what have they done for your style? What have they done for you is your boxing ability to, like, make you an improved fighter? My new team, um, I think our training, me and Will Jones, we got Junior Sabot on board as well. Our training is more is more suited, is more, it's more like, more tailor-made to suit me. What Will's done, he's gone back on my past fights and he's looked at my past fights and he's found the shots that I do well. And we work on those shots over and over and over again in the gym. So the shots that I once threw well, just by accident, I'm now throwing them well, but it's not by accident. And with even more spite, even more grit. And I mean those shots now, it's not just by accident, I threw the shot like, no, now those shots are now in me. And all the coaches I've had in the past, they haven't done that before. And that's what my current coach does do. And I've seen its effects. I've seen it in my past fight over the weekend, it's gone. I, I've seen it, it well, works. If you don't mind me asking, what sort of shots are they then? Uh, that'd be a secret because <laughs> Sandra Martin might be watching this afterwards. So I can't be giving him, I can't be giving him any um, <laughs> fair, fair, fair any enough. Tips. So it's the time, the timing of stuff of mm, your shots and mm, the different combos. Mm. What about stuff? outside of the boxing ring in, in regards to like the weights or your nutrition have you have mm. you have you adapted that since we last spoke in 2019 i think your weight and your nutrition is something that every fighter's got to work out themselves some fighters they work out as a team but you can't work out as a team everyone loses weight their own weight it depends on your body structure on your color on your shape some people got more muscle mass some people got less muscle mass the way someone else loses weight and the way i lose weight are both different because your body and my body are both different what might work with me, it might not work with you. So I think every fighter has to do it themselves 
individually work out your own body work out what works and do what works for you that's it and me I know what works for me now um, I've been using it for some time now and it's a pattern that I've used every fight now and that pattern won't change yeah and strength and conditioning is it a big part of your, your, your routine uh, I don't do strength and conditioning no no so it's just purely sparring running yeah pad work I can't do 16 push ups I can't do I, I couldn't get down here now and do 15 push I couldn't do 15 but not 25 push ups really I couldn't do 25 push ups really? but I still knocked out this guy in my last fight and I still got 17 KOs in my 24 fights or so yeah it's impressive so how how I how think did you get the power some fighters are naturally strong naturally strong and when you're naturally strong and, you, and then you work on that what happens you get a bit too big and it takes away from your speed now because you're focusing too much on your punching power and it takes away from your speed. Whereas I feel that some fighters that haven't got as much muscle mass as I've got naturally, they need to work on that just to get where I am naturally. But if I'm naturally there, I don't need to I don't need to be I don't need to be I don't need to be too big. Boxing is more about speed than it is punching power. When I'm fighting and I got the small eight ounce gloves on, it don't matter. It don't matter if I'm big or not. If I can hit you in the right place at the right time, you're going down. I give my grandma a pair of eight ounce gloves and let her hit you in the right place at the right time. You're going down, muscle or no muscle, you're going down, and that's what I truly believe. I so I, I, I like to focus on my speed and my technique, and I'm actually hitting them. They will go down whether I do strength and conditioning or not. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. So, uh, all right, you just had your fight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's obviously a bit of downtime for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, bar your property, mm-hmm. bar boxing. Mm-hmm. I mean, what 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 are you getting up to now? What, what are you doing? Um, that's it, really. Um, tonight I might go out to Sheesh. I'm gonna phone Anthony. Me and Anthony, you know, Anthony Yard, we could make. So, um, I'm gonna phone him a bit later, seeing if he's up for a bit of food. Uh, meet up with my friends. Um, play my PS Five. I'm quite a boring person outside the gym. I'm literally quite a boring person. A lot of people think that I'm living some exciting high life. I'm I'm living Beverly Hills every day. People don't know. I'm at home every day in bed. I'm either I'm either watching Netflix or I'm sat on the PS5 or I'm with my friend going out to get something to eat. I live such a boring life, such a boring life. But um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. True, true, true athlete. Speaking about Yard, he's got um, potentially this uh, world title fight against Bivol, is it mm-hmm. right? Yeah, is it Bivol or Berbatov uh, uh, or whatever his name? Yeah. Yeah, Beterbiev, yeah. Yeah, interesting. It is, interesting. It is, um, that's what I saw online, but I haven't. I actually haven't seen him since. Um, okay. He's in New York, just on the plane back now, so I haven't spoken to him. Yeah. But even so, me and him don't really talk about boxing anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. do you know what? I, I think he's one. He's definitely one individual from the UK that definitely deserves to get, to get right up there because he's a great fighter. 100%. And I think he beats all of these guys. Yeah. And the other at his best will beat anyone. Yeah. I've seen him at his best as an amateur. And as a pro, we haven't seen that in the yard yet. But the yard that we're about to see will be anyone in the world. Well, when he, when he uh, um, you know, got the victory against the second fight against Arthur's, mm-hmm. God, he's just like completely bashed The first him. fight, he could have, what he'd done against Arthur in the second fight, he could have done that in the first fight. In the first fight, he had, but what, by the, by, by the difference in those, in those fights, is the mindset he had. In the first fight, his mindset was, you know what? I'm here to win. I'm going to win the fight easily. Be smart. Hit and don't be hit. Win the fight smart. That's his mindset. And then he felt like he got robbed. So the second fight, he was angry. That was pure anger. I could see it in his face. Pure anger. There was no smart hit and don't be hit. It was my, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill this guy. And he could have taken him out in the first round if he, if he, um, if he really wanted to. And that's the difference between the first fight and the second fight. Now he just has to go into every fight with that same mindset. Don't forget what happened in the first half of fight. In every fight, you got robbed and you get robbed again. If you try that shit again, you'll get robbed again. So go out there and kill these motherfuckers. <laughs> kill these motherfuckers. Otherwise, you'll get robbed. Are you a boxing fan yourself? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, and anyone like you, do you follow any particular fighter or do you like uh, any particular fights that have had recently? No, not really, to be honest. No, not really. Yeah, just more like you just pull it on if it's on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Fair enough. All right. Well, look, I know this is your downtime. Mm-hmm. I'm really, really humbled and thankful that you come on the podcast. I think it's been a different different type of conversation. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make it a little bit different to the mm-hmm. previous one. 
And uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to you, you becoming a world champion eventually. Thanks for inviting me. I love it here. It's lovely. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And it's been um, it's been inspiring to see your journey, man. Because mm. like, not just as a fighter, but mm. obviously you were talking about property before, mm. and now you're doing it, and you've mm. got some some big plans, which is mm. great. Thank you, thank you. All right, well, look, if you enjoyed the podcast, obviously follow O'Hara. Everybody, everybody knows who you are anyway. Mm. And with my channel, please subscribe, share it. And always remember to be happy and never contempt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice one, mate. Thank you.